everybody, welcome to Light Screen Action. I'm your host, Tia Sermons. Today, my special guest on the show is Hadi L. Dallin, who voices AJ Gadgets on PBS Kids' new show, Hero Elementary. Hi, how are you today? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm like really excited right now. <laughs> oh, thanks. Likewise, yeah, I've checked out some of your work. You're a really great interviewer. And that's like not the fact that you're young. You're just in general really good. So, you know, keep that up. Thank you. And you really are good too. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. So, as I mentioned, you play AG Gadgets on PBS Kids' new show, Hero Elementary. Can you tell me mm -hmm. a little bit about the show and your character? Yeah, so it's a really great show aimed for preschoolers, and it basically takes the mesmerizing world of superheroes and kidifies it and makes it fun so that kids can learn about science through that prison of superheroes. So yeah, it's a very educational show, uh, STEM heavy, and the character I play is AJ Gadgets, and he's this you know young black character who's autistic, and it's funny because out of all the different superheroes, he's the only one on the team who actually doesn't have superpowers, and he's also dealing with autism. So he's a, a really, you know, humanized character, something, someone I think a lot of kids can relate to, and that yeah. he's able to overcome problems other characters who have, like, a lot, you know, more powerful abilities regularly face. So, yeah, he achieves this through, like, the different gadgets he invents. He has also this ability called thought projecting, where he can, like, think back to a situation and then little air bubbles of what he's thinking appear on the screen for the other yeah. characters and him to see. And, you know, and through that, they can, like, solve problems a lot more more easier. So, yeah, I, I definitely love playing AJ. And all around, it's a, it's a really great show that's, you know, uh, very educational, but also lots of fun. Yeah, I can agree with you on that. AJ is a really cool character. And even from watching the uh, pre-screen that they had the other day, it is a amazing show. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, I can't take credit for that, though. That's, that's all, like, in the writers and, and producers department. They did a really good job. Yeah. Yeah, they did. So what was it like playing AJ Gadgets on Hero Elementary? Mm -hmm. Well, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, it, it made me sort of like appreciate just the privileges I have and sort of recognize a little bit more of how like just the struggles autistic characters and people have to deal with. Because one thing I know like AJ regularly has to deal with is the fact that being autistic is he doesn't like his objects around him getting wet. You know, it's like he's really close to his backpack and he hates when it gets wet, and that's sort of a, a little thread, a little arc throughout one of the episodes. And so he has to, you know, find a way to make sure his backpack's always dry. And when it ends up getting wet, he has to work with his teammates to find a way to get it from, like, the raging river in one of the episodes. Mm -hmm. And so just it makes me appreciate a little bit of how, like, those are the struggles I've never had to deal with in being autistic. But it's, right. it's, it's also been, like, an educational experience for me and, and learning about what autistic people face and uh, more about, you know, science that I even have forgotten since I was in elementary school. So all around the show has been educational to me, for sure. Yeah, it's kind of like going into another world and getting to learn about things that you kind of never knew before. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely about that. Yeah. And so what does this role mean to you? Oh, it means a lot. Yeah, um, I'd say for the simple fact that there's a lot of diversity in the show. Like, I don't think I've ever been part of such a diverse show. Like, you know, we have Latino characters and I'm black Latino myself. So the fact that you have, you know, black characters and Latino characters, a char a, a, an ethnicity, I haven't really seen on the small screen that much representing kids content. You have Asian characters like Sarah Snap. And then you even have characters who are like Benny Bubbles, who are white males, but are played by um, like female artists. So like, just like all around from in front of the camera, but or I guess in front of the screen and behind the screen, we, we see lots of representation. So yeah, I, I really appreciate the show for doing that. Yeah. And so something that I thought was really cool is that the, that you guys have a teacher named Mr. Sparks and all the students <laughs> create the Sparks crew, which I think is a really cool crew name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so can you talk a little bit about the Sparks crew and how they use teamwork to solve problems? Yeah, so uh, in terms of the Sparks crew, they, they definitely have this like catchphrase where they say it's time to use our superpowers of science. So I'd say like the way we solve most of our problems is a combination of using the different science we've learned from Mr. Sparks and then all in all like combining our different abilities so that they complement one another to solve the, like, the problem of the day. So it's very much this thing of how like you need to use science and teamwork to solve your problems, which 
you know, I, I think that's definitely prevalent in the real world. Like you, I'm sure you've heard of like the NASA launch and everything of yeah. them going to space. That's a perfect example of, you know, them using science, but also it's, it's a teamwork initiative. You can't go to space just like through one smart person. It takes a group of people. So uh, yeah, the show really capitalizes on that and, you know, shows kids that it's, it's okay to collaborate with others in, in order to get tasks done. And you mentioned that something that the or the characters have like the catchphrase of is the power of science. Can you yeah. tell us what the power of science is? Yeah, so the power of science, I'd say, is everything that relates to science in general, what you what you know about science, uh, but also in particular things like observation skills. So yeah, when you know when when AJ Gadgets or one of his teammates are in a situation, they learn to they use their ability to observe the situation to see how they can approach it in the right way. So it's more than just science as a whole, but other things like that, observational skills, asking questions, that's another big element of our superpowers of science and things of that nature, you know, in, in order to solve issues and, and get the job done. It seems like it kind of covers everything. It does, honestly, yeah. Like I, the show, yeah, covers a, a range of topics of like working together, uh, science, understanding people's differences, diversity, like it's, it's a very well-rounded show, and I'm surprised that, you know, despite having so many elements to it, it hasn't lost itself, you know, with all those elements, and that it, it's still very defined in, in knowing what it is, despite having so much going on. So, yeah, like, you know, props to the writers and, and producers for being able to craft this thing, because they did a really good job. Who a lot of times have an interest in picking shows that kind of have a premise about Mary and Ray Eldman's quote, mm -hmm. you can't be what you can't see. So can you talk about the connection between the premise of Hero Elementary and the quote? Yeah, so great quote, yes. Yeah, so the quote basically reveals how, you know, you can't grow up to be a person who you've never really seen. And so they, I think with, you know, minorities like, like ourselves, if you're unable to see a successful black person on the, on the TV or in movies, how can you, you know, as a person work to become that in the real world? And so it's basically all about positive representation. When we see characters like AJ, you know, who struggle with their autism, but, over, but overcome it and are, are still able to accomplish, you know, great feats, the next autistic black kid who sees that, or may not even be black, but autistic, or, you know, uh, so on and so forth. When people see, you know, their gender identity or race represented in a positive way, then they're able to succeed in life. And so like, that's really what that, quote means and I like to be a part of shows writing wise and acting wise which which definitely live up to that yeah I can agree and I really do like that quote mm -hmm. yeah it's a good one my mom actually found it so I, I can't take all the credit for that it's yeah. very inspirational it's very inspirational yeah absolutely so I was wondering because I know that this is all about school like this is about school and also science so did you like science when you were in school I did like science, yeah, a lot. You know, um, with me though, it was, it was interesting because I never loved like the academic aspect of science where you would just be like reading a textbook and studying terms. I liked science when, you know, you could really work with your hands. I remember in elementary school, we had this one part, actually no, it wasn't elementary school, it was a summer camp. And we got to build like a homemade rocket and we would like, yeah, through like chemistry and understanding how, you know, different particles work with one another, end up creating this awesome explosion that would launch the rocket up. And I remember, you know, thinking back to that, I was I was really good at, at chemistry, and maybe if I didn't take the acting route, that's that's something I'd I end up end up going in. But uh, yeah, stuff like that, projects, projects where you know you're able to really be hands on with it. That's the aspect of science I really like, and I think that's something the show really does well. Where you know they teach you about science in a way that you can kind of do some of these experiments at home yourself in a safe way. Right. Yeah, I love doing science experiments like with my mom and stuff. It's nice. fun. Yeah, it's really fun. Cool. Since AJ has a superpower inside the show, and so what would you think is your superpower in real life? Mm, good question. Um, I'd say actually adaptability. That's probably it. And, it. and I've seen it mostly because of, you know, COVID right now and everything that's going on, because I have a lot of actor friends who only do acting, you know? So right now, since obviously, obviously the industry shut down, there's nothing they can really do. They're just at home. With myself, I try to diversify. So I'm also a script writer. I'm also in school right now, studying philosophy and film studies. So I, I definitely definitely have like a lot of things going on despite not being able to act. 
so I think adaptability is, you know, definitely been my strong suit. And, uh, and that's what humans are. I mean, like we, we adapt to situations to overcome them. So it's a great superpower to have. Yeah, that, that definitely does sound like a great superpower to have. Absolutely. Yeah. Although I will say adaptability is cool, but if I could really have any super out, superpower, it'd be flight. Like, I feel like that, <laughs> that'd be everyone's go-to one. You'd save a True. ton of money on on like airplane travel and, and stuff like that so yeah that'd be cool true true yeah so aj builds a bunch of different types of gadgets on the show if you could mm-hmm. use any of his in real life which one would it be and why well i'd say because of what i just said i'd use his jetpack backpack because yeah. that's the closest thing he could get to flight and yeah. uh, i exactly and i commute into work i'm not like in the city so I usually have to take a train. So because of that, I think I would just save a ton of money on fare and stuff and time. If I could just like fly to the city when I have to go to work or school. So uh, yeah, I, definitely a jetpack backpack would be cool. And then yeah. he has a couple other gadgets like this. I forgot what it's called, but it's like a reacher grabber thingy where it's like it ex- it extends like this prong outward. And then from that, he can like pick things up. So, you know, on a lazy Sunday when you're watching TV, that would be nice to like pick up the remote. <laughs> but uh, yeah, AJ has a, a lot of cool gadgets for sure. Yeah, the, the jetpack would probably take some practice, though. That's true. Yeah, it, it. Yeah, you definitely would have to be like a very skillful jetpack artist in that regard, or else you could get really injured. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. definitely. So, what lessons will kids learn f- from watching the show? Yeah. yeah. So. Um, I'd say, you know, definitely they they absolutely learn about science. You know, they learn about peer collaboration. They learn how to ask questions, to be patient during problem solving, um, to be more observational. And all in all, yeah, they learn lots of different things that I think are applicable to your daily life, not just in regards to science. So yeah, definitely lots to learn. Yeah. And for my last question, what advice would you have for kids on being comfortable with making mistakes and learning from them? Yeah, um, great question. I would say there's like a there's a really good quote that sums this up. It's like um, a winner is just a loser who tried one more time. So I mm-hmm. think you know if you if you want to accomplish anything, like it's not a matter of you know getting it right all the time or having like this perfect track record. It's just a matter of of continuing to be resilient and persistent until you finally accomplish things. You know because. I'm sure you've experienced this. Like people look at you and they're like, oh, wow, she's so successful at such a young age and everything. She, you know, she's, she's had it easier. She's so lucky, but they don't see all the failures you've endured or they don't see all the failures like I've endured and all the, all the things we've had to deal with as well, right? So right. I think it's a matter of understanding that failure or, you know, stops in the path are, are sort of just like a part of the journey and just enjoying, enjoying the process overall and knowing that in the end, you'll get there. That is great advice. <laughs> so that is all for our interview thank you so much but before we go when and where can people check out hero elementary yeah so you guys can check it out on pbs kids and i believe it's 8 a.m actually every day of the week so yeah it's yeah, we have 52 episodes so that's, that's probably why we can it's quite a few episodes yeah so that's probably why we can afford to do that but yeah 8 a.m uh every day on on pbs kids i'm gonna binge watch it <laughs> awesome thank you you're welcome and make sure that you guys check it out too and again thank you so much audio for letting me interview you today yeah no problem thanks for having me it was an honor this was really fun cool yeah likewise and uh, again in the future with with all my other projects coming up you know feel free to reach out and be happy to do it again yes i would love that cool cool awesome (laughs) yes so again, this is Tia Sermons. Thanks for tuning in to Light Screen Action. See you next time. Bye.